There's little argument that humans have had considerable impact on our environment. In this particular lesson, we're going to take a look at the Winkler method, which is a means of measuring the dissolved oxygen present in water. First of all, let's understand a little bit about the bond that exists between the water molecule and oxygen gas. First of all, the water molecule is highly polar and the oxygen gas molecule is nonpolar. However, we can cause the oxygen molecule to form a temporary dipole when something very polar like water approaches it. That weak dipole attraction that exists between these two can be enhanced under cold conditions if we can slow the molecules down. We can see from the equilibrium expression that if I reduce heat, remove the kilojoules of energy, I can force the equilibrium to the left and enhance the dissolving of oxygen. Cold water is better at dissolving oxygen than warm water. The oxygen that's present in our water is being used by several organisms. First of all, we have fish and plants, and we have numerous microorganisms that are present in the water, all requiring oxygen. The biological oxygen demand, or BOD for short, measures the demand that the microorganisms have for the oxygen in the water. Waters with a high BOD leave very little oxygen available for the fish in aquatic life. Let's take a look at a, an example. At 20 degrees Celsius, water is capable of dissolving 9.1 milligrams per liter of oxygen. If the microorganisms take 5.3 milligrams per liter of this oxygen, it leaves only 3.8 for the fish in aquatic life. Generally speaking, less than four milligrams per liter and fish can't survive. Different species can tolerate different levels of oxygen. The BOD is directly related to the population of microorganisms. The more microorganisms there are, the greater their demand for oxygen. In this picture you can see on the right, this pond has been, sub has been subject to some pollution, in particular runoff from a nearby field. Lots of organic matter, nitrates and phosphates have all washed into this body of water, enhancing the activity of the microorganisms, in this case cyanobacteria. They've grown so prolifically they've essentially starved the fish of oxygen. Now BOD by definition, or biological oxygen demand, is the amount of oxygen required to completely oxidize all the organic matter, perhaps due to sewage, in a water sample over a five-day period at 20 degrees Celsius. BOD is measured in parts per million, which happens to be equal to milligrams per liter. 9.1 parts per million equals 9.1 milligrams per liter. And you can see the math proved here down below. The dissolved oxygen level is measured at the start of the five-day period and then again after five days. We look at the difference between these two values. BOD equals that difference. Here you can see a table of the BOD of several different bodies of water. In a healthy river where there's very little organic matter or nitrates or phosphates, the organisms won't grow. And as a result, the change in the oxygen levels will be very, very small, perhaps less than one. In a polluted stream, where the microorganisms have access to nitrates and phosphates and lots of sewage and organic matter, they'll grow somewhat prolifically and essentially remove the oxygen from the water, causing a larger change in the dissolved oxygen. Now let's take a look, closer look at how one measures the amount of dissolved oxygen. This technique is called the Winkler method, and it's a means of measuring the dissolved oxygen present in a, in a stream of water through a series of redox reactions. In fact, there's four of them that take place sort of sequentially. In the first one, you produce a chemical called manganese hydroxide. It's a solid. Manganese hydroxide has a charge, the manganese at least, of plus two. It then reacts with the oxygen, the limiting reagent in our water stream, to produce manganese oxide dihydroxide. The manganese here has an oxidation state of plus four. This in turn then reacts with the iodine ion to produce the manganese ion and I2. I2 here being the critical substance, it has a charge of zero. This then reacts with the thiosulfate ion to produce I minus. This last step is the titration step. Now, what happens in this particular one is we add an indicator. The indicator in this case is starch. The solution will start off as a blue color. And as the I2 is used up, it will turn to a colorless I minus ion. 
Let's take a look at a worked example of how this would take place. Suppose you remove 100 cubic centimeters or 100 milliliters of water from a waste stream or a stream of water. The first thing we do is bubble air through it so we saturate it with oxygen at 9.1 parts per million if it was at 20 degrees Celsius. That water is then taken and sealed and incubated for a five day period. After that five day period, we take it out and titrate it to measure how much oxygen is still left. In my example, 6.2 milliliters of a 0 0.010 mole per liter sodium thiosulfate solution was needed. So let's begin with that. The first thing I do is calculate the number of moles of the sodium thiosulfate, 0 0.062 millimoles. Now when that chemical dissolves, it produces two sodiums and one thiosulfate. So as a result, my concentration, or at least my amount of thiosulfate is 0 0.062 millimoles of thiosulfate. Let's take that over to the last equation. I'm now going to figure out how much iodine was present. The reason I'm choosing iodine is iodine is also present in the third equation. So from the ratio in that equation, two to one, the amount of iodine would be half that amount, or 0 0.031 millimoles of iodine. Let's take that value up to the third equation. Now, in this third equation, I'm going to choose the manganese oxide dihydroxide with a plus four charge because that substance is present in my second equation. The ratio between these two is one to one. Now taking that amount up to the second equation, I can now determine how much oxygen my limiting reagent was present. The ratio between these two is two to one. I now know the amount of oxygen that was present in millimoles. Let's take that now and work it through to a concentration. So taking that value and the equation for concentration, I can now determine how many millimoles were present and ultimately how many grams were present. You'll notice I got five milligrams per liter of oxygen. That corresponds to five parts per million of oxygen after five days. To calculate my BOD now, I take my initial amount, 9.1, and I subtract the five that now remains, giving me 4.1 parts per million BOD. This corresponds to a somewhat polluted stream with a bordering amount of oxygen available for fish life. 